Welcome to Parenting Your Sensitive Child. Parenting a highly sensitive child can feel overwhelming, and all the parenting books in the world can only get you so far if your head and your heart are out of alignment with your child's. I'm your host, Julia McGarry. Let's create a new parenting paradigm. happened to all of us. We're right on track for bedtime or the morning routine is lined up just right to get to school on time and then they get stuck. They're dancing in the bathroom and watching themselves in the mirror. They're picking at scabs instead of putting on shoes. They are pulling out the markers to start drawing instead of grabbing their backpack. Or maybe you've agreed to lie down with them at bedtime, but they just won't stop talking and go to sleep. There are a number of reasons why this might be happening, but we're not going to go there today. Whether it's developmental or a stalling technique, I want to talk a little bit about how this is landing for us as parents and what we can do about that. This has been happening a lot around our house lately, so I'm speaking from my own experience, but it happens with my clients and their kids too. And I know that for many of us, when our child is moving at a turtle's pace and we think they should be moving faster, it sparks frustration. We get irritated and it becomes very difficult to stay calm. I'm going to give you a few questions to ask yourself when you find yourself in this situation. But first, I want to posit that whatever your child is doing, whatever the reason, It's exactly what they should be doing at this particular moment in time. Take a moment to consider that and consider what it would mean if it were true. I can imagine there might be some resistance to allowing this as a possibility, especially if you already believe that your child knows what they should be doing. They just aren't. I want you to consider this and allow for the possibility that it might be true and consider what that might mean for you. Could it be true then that this is a part of their progression towards independence? Could it be true that this behavior, while annoying, is communicating something other than defiance or resistance? Could it be true that this behavior is a signpost directing you towards skills that are still under construction, they need more support with in order to be truly independent and efficient in this area. Sometimes we get really hung up on the behavior and lose sight of the fact that there's really nothing wrong with it other than our own discomfort with it. Pushing ourselves past that initial thought we have that they shouldn't be doing this or that they should be moving faster helps us recognize that it doesn't really matter whether they should, they are doing this, and reacting as though they shouldn't be isn't likely to be that helpful to them. Pushing past that initial thought allows us to pause and consider what else might be going on and how we want to respond to this situation. With that in mind, here are a few questions you can ask yourself when you do manage to hit the pause button and reflect on these slow and frustrating moments. First, is this actually urgent? This is a good one to start with. Sometimes the answer is yes, but when you start questioning your urgency, you might find that you are creating it at least some of the time. For instance, I've had many moments with wanting to hurry the bedtime routine along. But when I slow down, the reason it feels so urgent is because I'm tired and I want to be done with bedtime. When I see this and I step back and I give my daughter space, I'm actually giving myself space too. It takes a lot of energy to get an unrushed child to hurry up. 
when I'm rushing her because I'm tired and I want to be done, I am actually creating a situation where I'm more tired by the end of the night when I am done. If I rest and allow her to move at her pace, I feel better by the end. Another question you can ask yourself is what could I do differently tomorrow to allow for them to take their time and feel unrushed? You might settle on starting earlier to allow for silliness, play, or hesitation. You might help them estimate how much time they need for each part of their routine so they don't eat up all of their time doing one thing and bump up against an actual time constraint. You might attend to your morning routine or your bedtime routine at the same time, side by side. As you consider this, it's important to remember that we're thinking about how much time they actually need, not how much time we think they should need. It's tempting to say, okay, all they have to do is put their shoes and socks on. That should take about five minutes. So I'll remind them five minutes before we need to go and we'll be good. This is almost guaranteed to backfire. Our kids are still learning to manage themselves and their time. And tasks that seem like they should be simple sometimes take way longer than we think they will. This is normal. This is part of their progression toward independence. We have to understand this and plan for it. And if we're really thinking about their progression from dependent to independent, one of the skills that often plays into these situations is Time management. Knowing that, it's absolutely relevant to ask yourself, how can I build their awareness of time and support them in managing their time going forward? I always suggest starting with a conversation and checking to see what they think would help them. My daughter likes me to set timers. If she knows she has 30 minutes to accomplish a series of tasks. We've talked about time management enough now, at age eight and a half, that she will estimate how much time she needs for each task and ask me to set timers accordingly. This isn't something I would impose on her, but because she's aware of time management as a skill and is working on developing it, she asks me to do it and it helps both of us. Okay, so that's three questions so far. I have two more for you, and both of them return the focus to you and how you are responding to this situation. First, you can ask yourself, how could I change the way this feels for me without them having to be the one to change? This usually involves identifying what you're feeling and why. For example, I feel frustrated because I want to be done already. Try to focus on why their actions are frustrating to you versus the fact that their actions are frustrating. Identifying that they are moving too slow isn't as helpful as I find their slowness frustrating because I want to be done. If they're moving too slow, then the burden of change is on them, and no matter how much you try to force it, ultimately, that's out of your control. You do, however, have control over yourself. And if you can see, ah, yes, I really want to be done with this, you can redirect yourself. Remember, it doesn't have to be a big redirection. You don't need to get yourself from frustrated to delighted. That's a huge stretch. But if you could feel tolerant instead of frustrated, that would be good, right? You might try reminding yourself that the more space you give them to practice, the better they're going to get at it. 
you might try reminding yourself that independence is built a little bit at a time. You might try reminding yourself that no matter how slow it goes, you're all going to get to bed. There are a lot of options. The trick is finding a thought that helps you feel more tolerant of what they're doing and then remembering it when you are approaching those frustrating situations. Finally, it's always a good idea to ask, how are my boundaries looking? Am I sacrificing my boundaries to accommodate what my child needs? What would it look like to gently assert my own boundaries right from the start, then hold firm to them? Would I feel differently if I were clear with my boundaries and sticking to them than I do when I drop my boundaries to accommodate my child? I'm kind of laughing to myself because I gave you a series of questions instead of one and then some explanation. I'll give you an example, though, before we go. Let's say your child has asked you to lay down with them at bed tonight. You don't really want to, but you have a sense that this is what they need tonight and that they'll sleep better if you roll with them on this. Okay, then when you lay down, you can't settle. And they keep kicking you. And you're thinking about all the other things you need to do. And you hold out as long as you can, but eventually you snap and say, that's it, I'm done, can't do this anymore. But then that's met with tears and confusion, and then bedtime takes even longer. This is a good example of setting aside your personal boundaries because of a perceived need. In this situation, I like to offer that it's possible to accommodate your child's request for company and maintain your boundaries. You just need to be clear about it from the beginning. Instead of reluctantly saying, okay, you tell them, I can lay down with you for a little while, but I will probably need to go before you fall asleep. I still have to get ready for bed myself, so I'll give you a hug and say goodnight when I need to get up and take care of myself. Now, to be clear, in this example, we're assuming that the child has some experience falling asleep on their own. This is not what I would recommend that you do if you've been lying with your child until they fall asleep since birth and you're trying to change that pattern, okay? It's a little too cold turkey for a lot of families that are in that situation, but for a kid who's usually fine at bedtime but has been asking for more company lately, it's going to make a difference if you establish your boundaries from the beginning instead of trying to let them go and getting frustrated. All right, I hope that this helps some of you out there. I'm wishing you a peaceful change in the seasons, a calm week, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Do you feel like you're parenting 24 seven and you're still not sure your child is getting what they need? Are you ready to stop parenting reactively and start living in partnership with your sensitive child? Are you ready to reclaim time for yourself and time for your dreams? Then you're going to want to explore coaching with me. I help my clients tune out all the noise, better understand their kids, build a parenting strategy that meets their family's specific needs, and do the mindset work necessary to implement that strategy consistently without sacrificing themselves in the process. To get started, just head over to partnerpath.com, click on coaching, and get your free consultation set up. Let's get to know each other.